Hi, I'm Jules from Fast Car and today we're at the Goodwood Festival of Speed and we're going to go and have a sit down with the boys from Maguire's to do a little bit of a Q&A or what we like to call it in Fast Car, what the fact. Let's go and uh, sit down with Tom and Dale. We're here with the Ant and Deck of the uh, Car Cleaning World. Dumb and Dumb. <laughs> Tom and Dale, yeah. <laughs> the dynamic duo I like to call you. Yeah. And we've been asking our sort of uh, loving readers and viewers and Facebook followers some questions about, um, we're asking them to ask you some questions about car care. So I've got them written down here. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to fire them at you and get you to answer them. Good luck everybody. What could possibly go wrong? First one, nice easy one. What are swell marks? So swell marks are tiny, tiny scratches within your paint, whether or not it's clear coat or solid colour. Um, they give the impression of being circular. Um, that's because the way the light hits it, these scratches are going every way possible. So it gives the identity of looking circular the way the light hits it. Um, they're nothing to be scared of. They're nothing that you need to be stressed out about removing. We have plenty of things like our ultimate compound that is my go-to swell slayer and that make swell removal a lot easier. So they're just minute scratches within the paint. Yeah, so easily curable. Yeah. Very. Brilliant. Uh, this is a good one. Isn't snow foam just for the Instagram generation? <laughs> I think it's been, uh, I think it certainly feels like that. Um, and it, it's definitely fun to use and takes a great picture, so why not? Mm -hmm. But uh, especially over here in the UK, during the winter months where you've got salt, road grime, build up of all the mess and stuff that we get on the side of the road, uh, snow foam is a pre-wash that softens all those nasty things that inflict the swell marks. Yeah. So you're softening that upper surface of contaminants before you get into the contact wash. Right, okay. What is iron fallout? So it's a process of removing bonded contaminants that are on the paint, um, so all over the car really. So iron fallout is industrial iron or just like metal from brakes or anything that's on the road that's stuck to the paint and you use products like our iron decon you spray it on the surface it has that very instagram friendly turning pink and purple yeah. and what it's doing is chemically breaking down that that deposit on the paint and again it is reducing stuff that could cause swells before the contact wash so, so it's important we're kind of like talking processes you know yeah. we talked about snow foam and you can talk about using an iron fallout um, before t physically touching the paint um, so yes it's it's things, especially during the summer, that are bonded to the paint on the roads, where you live, if you live near an industrial site, it could be anything. So a train station actually, yeah. if you're yeah. a commuter, the, the iron, uh, the brakes on trains are typically iron based and the fallout from them is quite heavy. Yeah. Right. So the product itself is a chemical that's designed to break that down. So what is the correct sequence of actually washing your car? Do you start with the wheels? Um, so there's five easy steps to come. Okay. Clean, prep, polish, Right. Yeah. So, you know, in, in generic terms, I like to start with the wheels. Yeah. Wheels first, and then the pre-wash stage. Again, removing anything that can be bonded to the surface before the contact wash, and then you go through your correction stages, like Tom said. Your clay to make it smooth, your polish to make it shiny, your wax to protect, and then your maintenance with a detailer. Yeah. I want to polish the lips of my wheels. Should I clay bar them first, and what products would I use? Something I've never, I've never used clay on, mm. on the lips. Obviously. The world of wheels is vast, as you know. You know, you can have uh, straight polished uh, lips that don't have any coating on them. They could be coated, they could be clear coated. Um, there's no set one path. So it's, it's an event like this where you come and talk to us, tell us in detail about your situation. It's not always one clear cut. Um, if they are painted, then you know, you could use something like that. I like to use our Wash Plus shampoo to give something like that a real deep scrub um, before polishing. Right. So, side answer to that, you can clay any surface. Right. So you can clay glass, bare metals, uh, so long as it's not a texture. So obviously, if you've got a textured bumper trim or something, that texture just grabs the clay. Apart from that, you can clay any of the surface. So if they had okay. some stuff on there, you can, but then you'd go about to the metal polish. Do you have any tips for applying like rubber restorers? I always seem to get the paint, always seem to get it on my paintwork. Don't, don't be worried. If you get it on the paintwork, just have a microfiber to hand, just to be quick to wipe it off. Uh, it, you're almost like prepared, so like, don't have that trim restored. Be like, I'm gonna go all the way around the car and then tidy up. Almost have the microfiber there. Okay. If it's one that you've just detailed down with, maybe a bit better, because it's got some lubricant on it, for you to just nice and safely wipe the area away. Okay. Yeah. Don't overload your pad. Yeah. Don't use too much product. Uh, I think that brings us on to one of the next questions, actually. Yeah. So, uh, someone's asked, how, how do I always smearing my windows when I'm oh, nice. cleaning them? So, 
Okay. Um, simple answer. Make sure your towels are clean. Yeah. Um, whenever I'm using our glass cleaner and our glass towel, one side is a dedicated cleaning surface, yeah. and the other side that I flip for the second buff is always the buffing. So it's always dry. It removes any white marks or excess product. So it's less product, less time, less effort. Yeah. So if, like, for instance, on what on a window, front window, just one spray. A lot of people will saturate the whole window. One spray. As Dale mentioned, and you've got a side to uh, uh, move the product around and collect the, the, the dust and grime, and then uh, with a clean side, you're buffing it. More product is harder to collect off into a towel. And you obviously save and the product sure as a well. Good product, a good towel, so a nice, good, clean towel. If it's muslin cloth, it's not designed to uh, collect and absorb, it just moves it around. So something's actually going to absorb the product and the dirt that you lift it off. Waterless washes, how do they not? scratch your paintwork by using them correctly yeah, yeah. right um, so it's putting them in the right context now what, we call it the waterless wash um, it's, it's more of a maintenance product um, it's for events like this where we've cleaned the cars we've driven them to a car show and we don't have access to water so it's the safest way of maintaining the car when it's just got light road grime and dust on there now if the car looks like it needs a wash then wash it with traditional two buckets grit guard shampoo um, but like we say it's it's the best way of maintaining a dirty clean car. Now, I always use two towels, um, saturate the panel with, with the waterless wash and wax, and as I'm wiping with my cleaning towel, I roll it away from the surface. So instead of dragging the dirt and grime, I'm lifting it away. And then with the second towel, I buff. But there's a lot of technology within the product as well. So it doesn't just saturate, it lubricates. Yeah, they've got clever lubricants built in to encapsulate the dust and the grime. Okay, exactly. yeah, so if your car's filthy and full of mud, you don't just... Yeah, no. yeah. it's almost like a... Common sense. Uh, yeah. It's almost like a, a heavy duty detailer. It's got more cleaning ability within it that makes it safe. Another one, so your ultimate collection, yes. it's all been rebranded. Yeah. But is it just a rebrand or is there it's some a, more to that? That's a good question. Um, obviously we've had some nice fancy updates with the packaging, uh, including a lot of incorporated into the yellow tradition and they've been black packaged. It's not just repackaging, uh, they're all full formulation changes, so ultimate wax, paste and liquid have seen a new formulation, along with the quick wax and the quick detailer. Um, if you see them out and about and they've got yellow trigger heads or yellow packaging, they're not just packaging changes. So the wax is better gloss, better longevity, easy to buy and use. The quick detailer is slicker to use, change the fragrance, because it's all about them smelling good too. Um, so yeah, not just a packaging change. They've actually really have took a step forward with them all. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and this is quite a common question I sometimes get asked actually. Um, what's, the what's the difference between a wax and a polish? Nice, good question. So they're kind of, um, it's like a two stage. So we talked about our different stages earlier. Polish is all out gloss when we talk about polish as a brand. So we have our ultimate polish. If you want to give your car a real slickness of, of gloss and a dark finish, uh, if you want a metallic to really pop, then you'd use a polish. Now, that's great, but if you just do that and leave it, a few weeks later, it's going to look how it did before. Right. So you need to protect it. It's like a clear coat you know, on your car. You have the base coat and then the clear coat. Um, your wax boosts gloss, gives a bit more, um, bit more enhanced finish, but also that's all that protection. So if you ever are going to polish the car, make sure you put on a wax to give it that longevity protection. Right, I've just bought my new project car. It's great, but the two previous owners were smokers. What can I do to get rid of this stink? So <laughs> there's a few. There's not one thing that's going to do it for you. There's, there's a few different stages. So you want to make sure, get, you know, you want to get in there and give it a good clean. So using our MPC to give the carpets a real deep clean, the seats, the headline, you can use that one product on all those kind of fabric surfaces. And then using something like our refresher bombs, now they are a, an air refresher. They deodorize the filters. They're not a kind of they're not a chemical cleaner or anything like that. They're just deodorized. Um, and what you do is you set that off. Don't sit in the car while it's don't sit and watch it. Uh, get all the blowers sure going. Yeah, yeah, get yeah. it full trap with the AC uh, recirculation and let it feed into the system and deodorize those um, those vents. So it kind of instead of just masking, it's removing. And okay, I think that's it. It's, it's not. It's not. They can be a quick fix. But that smoke penetrates all the, you know, all the carpet interior surfaces. So by doing a few steps, like the bomb, the air bomb will help the filtration system. If that, then you think it's coming back. You probably need to deep cleanse the seats a little bit. So a wet and dry back with some of our uh, uh, carpet material cleaner. And then if that's not, then it's got in the roof lining. Because typically it's been flicked out, so then it's high concentrations up near the near the uh, roof lining. So it can really get embedded into it, but it can come out. Do cleaning products have a best before date? No. 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 Temperature is key for them. So, so long as they're stored, 
certainly for us, some of them are heat blended. If they're subjected to freezing conditions, that heat cycle is reversed and there's no shaking that will mix them back together. So, so long as they're um, stored above freezing, then there's no, no shelf left. And if they've been sitting on the shelf for a little while, would you recommend, yeah, well, depending yeah, on what it is, it's going to be a little, yeah. little shake, um, yeah, waking always. them up. What is the difference between soft and hard waxes? So when we talk about the Apart kind of liquid, soft and hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, so if you look at our consumer range of waxes, like our Gold Class, our Ultimate, um, and the NXT, traditionally they come as a paste and as a liquid. Uh, technically, in the way they perform, they are both the same as long as they're in the same family. Um, the difference is personal preference. Yeah. Right. So myself, I like the aesthetic and the look of a paste wax. I like that traditional, I like how much I can really control how much goes on. But if you're a fan of liquid, the bonus to liquid wax is you can use it with a machine polisher. And you can't exactly spread a paste as easily with um, with the machine. Um, Tom prefers a liquid, yeah. I like a paste. Okay. Well, this has been a common misconception from of old and from our parents and our granddads and whatnot. They've all an old, like, uh, I won't mention other brands, but you know, old golden tins that kicked around garages when we were growing up, they're all typically a paste wax. So that's, we've got this assumption that because it's harder, it's going to be harder on the paint and last longer. The truth of the matter is they, they're exactly the same. Okay. Um, it's personal preference. Like, and literally, if someone asks me, they're always going to get a liquid answer. If someone asks Bayer, they're always going to get a paste answer. And we regularly arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins? I'm oh, not about anything, we just regularly Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> I'm like Liam Neeson, got old man strength. <laughs> he has got old man strength, yeah. I won't say what this bloke's written, but he says, something, my, my something brother sprayed his wheels on the drive the other day and he got overspray on my paint. Is there anything I can do to get rid of it without taking it to a professional? Uh, so, easy step for anything that's like that, I would suggest I'll wash plus shampoo. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's a great way to kind of gently clean the paint. So this shampoo is not like our typical shampoos. You know when you know you go through a phase of seeing all these deconstructed food um, on TV shows and stuff like that. It's kind of like a deconstructed wash. You have your bucket, your grid guard, your wash mitt, but the shampoo's applied to the mitt itself. It's thicker, and then you you kind of work it into the surface, and that's going to give your paint a real deep clean. It's like an exfoliator for the car, basically. Yeah. It's right. got clay built into it. So okay. uh, we get a lot of people ask, especially this time of year, about um, suntan lotion, fingerprints, right. stuff like oily fingerprints. Yeah. It's a great way to kind of push the reset button yeah. and remove anything like that. Yeah. Okay. It's not, an every, it's not an every washing shampoo. You do it as a problem solver or a reset every six months or something like that. Yeah. And finally, the lever in my car is a bit cracked and faded. Probably a bit like my face, actually. That's how I feel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the bolsters, is there a way to revive it using a cleaning product? We, we have a vast array of products, especially within the interior kind of sector. Mm. We do have leather care products that kind of clean and protect and, and moisturize. We don't have a restoration pro products yeah. like for cracks and everything like that, unfortunately. It's nothing we'd never like to someone and promise in yeah. the world. We do have things that will make it softer, like our Ultima Leather Balm is my go-to. It, it cleans, it conditions and protects. It's kind of like a paste wax uh, yeah. for your leather. Um, and we do have dedicated deep cleaners and, and conditioners, but for full restoration like that, yeah. obviously it'd be speaking to a leather specialist. We can stop it getting there, yeah. but we can't help it come back. Okay. Um, but there are really good companies out there that can watch in the process. It's not unfixable, so if it's cracked and discoloured, mm. there are companies out there that sand it back, paint them, and like they look like yeah. no. So and then put a nice protection on them. Yeah, exactly that. Then we can help. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that, guys. No Brilliant, well, I'll let you get back to Enjoy your stand, your it looks busy. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. So, I hope that gave you a bit of insight into the world of detailing. If you've got any more questions, leave them in the comments below. Cheers, guys.